Hello, and welcome to Polk Street United Methodist Church. My name is Dr. Mark Welsh. I'm the senior pastor here at Polk Street, this historic congregation of 131 years old. Whether you worship with us here in our sanctuary, online, or in our TV ministries, we are so blessed to be able to worship with you. Matthew 18.20 says, Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there am I with them, Jesus said. We claim that promise, that wherever we are, whatever we're doing, we can lift up our hearts to the Lord together as God's people. So thank you for worshiping with us today. We pray that God does something special in your life as we lift up our hearts to the Lord. God bless you, and may we lift up our hearts in worship. Good morning. I'm glad you're here today to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to invite our ushers to head down and pass out registration pads, and we appreciate you filling those out for us. And we also, uh, make sure you look at this insert, special events, and we're going to celebrate the ministries of Polk Street United Methodist Church this Wednesday night at 6 o'clock in the Great Hall. It's going to be a fun time. And at 5 o'clock, you can come eat pizza. But if you're going to come eat pizza at 5, you've got to call the church office and let them know. Because if you just show up, we won't have enough pizza for everybody. So make sure you call Carol. Get your name on the list. Come at 5. It's a fun time of fellowship and getting to know other church members. And then we're going to celebrate at 6 o'clock the ministries here at Polk Street. There's also a lot of other ways to connect and grow as a disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so, during this past week, have you said a good word about the Lord Jesus Christ to anyone that you've come across? Or have you invited someone to come and worship with you here at the church? This reminds us of the Lord's great commission to go make disciples of all nations. Let us pray. Lord, we're thankful for this day. We thank you for your incredible love for each of us and help us as we worship to be an expression of our thanksgiving for all you've done. Lord, we pray for our neighbors and partners in ministry, the family support services as their building is burned down. Lord, we pray that no one was harmed, that you watching over the first responders and those coming to help put out the fire. Lord, we pray for them to be resettled and to continue reaching out and helping others, especially the least of these. Lord, thank you for this day that you've made for us to come and worship you and help us to glorify your holy name. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Will you please stand and join me in the call to worship as printed in your bulletin? New every morning is your great love, God of light and grace. And all day long you are working for your good in the world. Stir up in us desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors, and to devote each day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. And will you remain standing as we join together in the affirmation of faith? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Take a moment and greet those near you. As the people at Polk Street 
are greeting one another. I would like to greet you in the name of the Lord. Welcome to worship at Polk Street. I pray God riches blessings on you as together we worship the Lord. Today we'll be looking at lamentations and discussing some of the stresses and the anxieties in this world and what we can do and what God can do to help us through those. I hope that you'll enjoy this message on yet. God bless you and we greet you in the name of our Lord. Good morning, everybody. How are y'all doing? Good, good. I'm glad y'all are here this morning. Um, so last week, we talked about the 12 disciples, the 12 original disciples, right? Y'all remember that? And, um, and so whenever I got back to work on Monday, when I went in my office, someone peeked their head in my office, and they said, you know what, Mary? About 90 years ago, whenever I was a little boy, I learned a song about the disciples, and he proceeded to sing it to me, and I had not, I did not know. I've got a lot of songs in my head, but that is one I did not know. So I was like, no, Paul, why don't you come and sing that on Sunday for us? So, no, Paul, do you want, <laughs> there we go, there you go. <laughs> this is a song I learned in Sunday school back in 19... <coughs> Uh, <laughs> so I used to learn songs. I, I would learn all the books of the Old Testament and the New Testament and disciples and so forth from singing. So I think I remember this song. See if I can sing it. And it goes like this. This is the day. No. No, not that, that one. That is not. That's not that it. one. Oh, that okay, is only on Wednesdays, okay. no Paul. Yes, yes, chapel okay. time. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <clears throat> and I got to close my eyes and really focus so I can remember this. Peter, Andrew, James, and John, fishermen of Capernaum, Thomas and St. Matthew too, Philip and Bartholomew, 
James the less and Jude the brave, Simon the zealot and Judas the knave. Twelve disciples all in all. Plus Matthias. Following the master's call. <laughs> there. Yay! Very good. Thank you, Noel Paul. We expect a solo out of you every Sunday from now on. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, today we're going to talk about another disciple that was not part of the original 12, but he was a disciple, and he had a big part in writing the Bible. He, he wrote a lot of letters that are in our Bible, okay? And elementary kiddos, y'all learned, uh, y'all learned about him just probably in the summertime, I think it was, we talked about him and how he was on the road to Emmaus and he became blind for a short period of time. And y'all remember his name? It has four letters, starts with a P. Do you remember? It starts with a P. John does not start with a P. Oh my goodness gracious. Philip, that no. What'd you say? Paul, very good. High five, Rachel. Good. She was even here in the first service and she didn't give me the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> so Paul, yes, Paul wrote one of the books of the Bible that he wrote was Galatians, okay? And in that book, in chapter 5, verse 16, in part, he says that we are to walk by the Spirit. And the Greek word that Paul is using in that is a word that I learned at school just about a couple of weeks ago. I learned that. And it is the word peripatio. Can you all say that? It's kind of a big word. Parapatio, parapatio, and parapatio, and how he was using that in that sentence, it means to walk around and around something or to journey. And I have, Catherine, you're sitting on my journey shoes. Did you know that? <laughs> I have on my journey shoes. These are good shoes to walk around in, okay? So I put these on because we're going to go on a journey this morning, okay? I'm ready to go on a journey. What else is something that you can bring on a journey? What, a lot of a backpack, yes. So I brought my backpack. And so you know what? I got to thinking, okay, if we are going to go on a journey with Jesus, what do we need to bring? What is like, oh, I had lots of right answers just then. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's hang on. Let me see. Let me see. What do you think? What I heard over here. What would y'all say? The Bible. Right. And so I am I, I'm a very good Methodist. I'm bring, I brought my John Wesley Study Bible, okay? So I have that. It's the Wesley Study Bible. So I brought that to to, um, to study with, okay? What else did we bring on our journey? Catherine, that one's kind of big. You want to see if you can hold it, though? This is big, and there's smaller versions of this, but this is the concordance and a dictionary, and inside there, you are going to find words that you see in the Bible, and the concordance will tell you, like if you're looking at the word faith, and you're like, man, I wonder how many verses have the word faith in it, and it'll tell you in there. It'll give you all the lists of the Bible verses that have faith on it, okay? And another thing that we can do, what's something that you might do on a daily basis to record like what you did that day? that you write in a jur journal, right? Yes, so we can write down our thoughts about the Bible verses that we read inside a journal. And let's see, there's something else here that y'all have done. I know that y'all have done this, that we, can, that we can do, that we can bring on our journey here. Do y'all know what this is? It's a coloring book. Yes, but this is not an ordinary coloring book. This coloring book um, has Bible verses and pretty little pictures that are in here that you can color. And so while you are coloring these, while you're coloring on these, you can read over the Bible verse and read it over and over and start to really just think about the words that are in there. And so I brought my, my coloring book along with some colors on there, okay? So those are just some ways that you can... Um, journey with Jesus. And you know, the more that we journey with Jesus, the better we get with hearing him. And, and that, that way he can lead us better. We are more open to, to what he says to us. All right, so let us pray, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you so much for being on this journey with us and leading us wherever we go. Amen.
storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the world is tossing me like a ship out on the sea, thou who rulest wind and water, stand by me. When I'm growing old and feeble, stand by me. When I'm growing old and feeble, stand by me. When I do the best I can, and my friends misunderstand Thou who never lost a battle Stand by me Thou who never lost a battle Stand by me we enter into a time of prayer, I invite you to look at your bulletin inserts to find a list of those we're praying for this week. Psalm 25 says, Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day that you've made. We're here to rejoice and be glad in it. We pray for your Holy Spirit to come and lead us into your presence this morning. We are grateful for those who could be here this morning, and we give you thanks for our television congregation at home. I pray that we are all transformed and made new as a result of your work in our lives today. Lord, as you already know, we have many who have been sick, even to the point of being hospitalized, and some to the point of passing from this life into your loving arms. We continue to ask for your healing touch and sustaining grace on all we have named and those whom we silently name in our hearts. <clears throat> we give you thanks for the life of Dr. Martin Luther King and his dream of freedom and equality for all nations, ages, and races. Help us to carry on that legacy of love as we serve you, O oh God, in the world around us. We pray for our homeless in Amarillo and ask that you would show us our part in helping those you call the least of these. We thank you for the many celebrations in our lives and the way you rejoice with us on the mountaintops. We praise you for all the good things you pour out on us from above. Gracious God, as we learn more from Pastor Mark about following Jesus, help us to hear from you through him. May the words of Mark's mouth and the meditations of his heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. <clears throat> Amen. I invite our ushers to make their way forward as they receive our tithes and offerings today. And just a big thank you to this congregation for your faithfulness in giving 
not only of your finances, but of your time and service to reach out with the love of Christ to our world. Please join me in the offertory prayers printed in your bulletin. God of the ages, your angels announce the birth of your son to lowly shepherds, and those shepherds worship the holy child, kneeling beside kings in a stable. You gave us the gift of a savior, sent for the rich and the poor alike. Every gift given from the heart is blessed by you, and every act that proclaims your love brings joy to you. May the gifts that we offer and the love we proclaim to others in our words and actions satisfy your heart this day and all through the coming years. We pray this in Christ's holy name. Amen.
Please remain standing as you're able and join us as we sing hymn number 553. The words are printed in the bulletin, and if you want to choose to harmonize and sing the parts that are written to this, you can look at it in hymnal. The tune is the same as it is to Bless Be the Tie, which you know quite well, so we'll expect some boisterous noise. Reading oh. the second verse. No verse to Lamentations chapter 3, verses 16 to 24 says, He has broken my teeth with gravel. He has trampled me in the dust. I have been deprived of peace. And I have forgotten what prosperity is. So I say, my splendor is gone and all that I had hoped for him, the Lord. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them. And my soul is downcast within me. Yet I call this to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Have you had a tough day? Maybe you've had a, a tough week or a, a tough month. Maybe you've had a tough life. You know, there's a lot of anxiousness in the people around us. You know, anxiousness sometimes because maybe your team didn't win. Or maybe you're hoping for a political outcome or maybe a, a politician and maybe there's angst within some of your spheres of influence because maybe they don't agree with you. Maybe you have a sickness in your family, or maybe you're sick. Maybe you're dealing with, with death or grief or some type of struggle. You know, there's talks and rumors of war, of conflicts worldwide. That can really be a struggle. Every day we hear about violence from young people. Some of those places that we would never have imagined. And it's becoming commonplace. Not only that, but there's anxiety about the future of the United Methodist Church. There's anxiety about the future of the church as a whole. Those who call themselves Christians. There's a lot of anxiety and uncertainty in this day. And my friends, I would like to... 
to submit to you that we're going through tough times. These are tough times. And if, if you've had tough times, then the book of Lamentations is for you. Jeremiah is writing this, this song, this lament, which is Lamentations. And he's, he's lamenting. He's like mad. He's like crying. He's weeping. And he's considering the destruction of Jerusalem, the walls, the whole area. In 586 B.C., Jerusalem is destroyed. And he's just weeping. He's sad about it. It's like, like a funeral song for the Jewish capital. You see, the temple had been destroyed. The king is gone. And God's people are in exile. He's having a tough time. And so there is a sermon outline for you in your bulletin. If you could please pull this out. I'd like for us to look at this. Look at this together. And what it means for us here today in 2020. So Jeremiah is lamenting. He's crying out to God. This is a man of God. Someone who knows God intimately. Who is a prophet. Who God has spoken through him. To other people. Call people to repentance. Called God's people back to God. Shown and cared for that love of God that is in his life with those around him. And yet he's lamenting. Look at the scripture. It's, he says, he has broken my teeth with gravel. I mean, I can just feel that in my teeth. Oh, that's harsh. That's hard. He's broken my teeth. You know how it is to have a toothache, to bite on maybe a rock or like a a piece of of ice or maybe something. I mean, that hurts. He's disgruntled. He says, he's trampled me in the dust. I've been deprived of peace. I've forgotten what prosperity is. He's in a really dark place. And it's like he's going down and down and down this dark road. For three chapters, he, he's lamenting. He goes on, he says, My splendor is gone, and all that I've hoped for in the Lord. I remember my affliction and my wondering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Talk about depressing. It's like a round character. He's telling life how it really is. Not just giggles and fun and laughter. But even as the people of God, we have things that bring us down. They seem to breathe down our necks. That heat of the day. And those struggles that not only we experience, but that our church, the nation, the world experiences. He's going through a tough time. When I was in Kentucky at Asbury Seminary in Wilmore, I was going through a tough time. I was living with two other guys. I was a single man at the time. And not only dealing with roommates, but also dealing with some of the struggles in seminary. Seminary is kind of like law school. It's a love-hate relationship. You learn a lot, you grow a lot, but you have to struggle you have to be able to, to submit your own viewpoint. Not only understand what, where the forefathers and the patriarchs and matriarchs came from, what the Bible says, but what do I believe? And you wrestle with it. And sometimes those are dark days because you question, and in that darkness, then you get to experience the light. So it's healthy, it's good, but it's not always fun. And so I was going to the store with my two roommates to go buy groceries for the week as a single guy with two other single guys. But the thing is that my roommates loved to eat all my food. And so as we bought food, we all split the bill three-way, evenly. But every week they would eat the things that I picked out. You know how that is. And I wasn't happy. As we pulled in the parking lot, we got out. I looked around, and not only was I not happy... Not only was I going through a tough time in seminary, not only was I going through a tough time with my roommates, but I looked around, there was like, this parking lot, I remember, was so dirty. Had all this trash around it in Kentucky, and oh, it was just, it was filthy. I was thinking, why am I in Kentucky? I want to go back to Texas. Oh, the parking lots there at least are nice. 
But I just remember just being so disgruntled, so mad. I, it's like I was lamenting to God. And as we're buying all the stuff that they wanted and that I wanted, knowing that, knowing that they would eat all my food, especially the cereal box that I loved, came out. And as we came out, during the hour that we were in the supermarket, it had snowed an inch. And I really hadn't experienced that much of that. And I looked out, and it's like everything was covered. Everything, the, the cars, the dirt, the trash, the trash cans, everything. And I remember in that one instant, it's like God was speaking to me and said, yeah, you're going through a tough time, but I got you covered. I'm covering you with my grace. All the filthy areas, all the areas that are, are trash, all those areas that you just don't want to see, and, and maybe some of that darkness that I've showered down my grace and I got you covered. It was in that instant that I looked out and said, wow, I can do this. God's got this. Jeremiah says that. In Lamentations 3, 21, he says, yet. Here he is talking for three chapters about how horrible everything is. And then everything hinges. It's like a tipping point. In verse 21, he says, yet I call this to mind. And therefore, I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love. It's like his, emotional, his emotions totally change. His emotional support system, everything. Because of what God had done for him. That great love. That intoxicating love that God had for him. Even in his darkness. Even in that tough time. You know, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Says that three things remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these things is love. That you can have everything in the world. But if you don't have that one love, you ain't got nothing. And Jeremiah is saying, look, yet even in this darkness, that one love, not only does it, it capsize, not, not only does it capture me, it also helps catapult me. It says, victoriously rise above. V Lamentation 3.22b says, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. You know, when you're going through a, a tough time, you can be totally consumed. Lose sight of that love that God has for us. That plan that God has for us, even in the midst of turmoil and pain. We can forget the price that Christ paid for us to give us that victory. 1 Corinthians 15, 55 says that Christ came to take away the sting of sin and death and gave us victory forever. That pain only lasts through the night, but joy comes in the morning, my friends. He gave us victory forever. So that we might rise above and overcome whatever pain, and whatever struggle, whatever tough time we're going through. But it's not just once and we're done. It's every day. Scripture says, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Just like the sun rising in the morning. Every day. God is faithful even when we are faithless. And says, so I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him every single day. How God is faithful, even in the tough times. So last week, the Kansas City Chiefs were playing the Houston Texans. And the Kansas City Chiefs were down 24 zip. It looked like a dark day for the Kansas City Chiefs. The Texans were all gloating. They were so happy because they were going to go on in the playoffs. But it was a tough time for the Chiefs. And they didn't know where they were going to go. Yet, Patrick Mahomes got that team together. He marched up and down the sidelines like a drum major leading the band. Inspiring his team to come together and stay together. Just as the Texans were taking them apart. Mahomes said, let's do something special. Everyone's counting on us. But you know, 
They've already counted us out. Let's go out there and play, play by play, and put it out there. And play by play, he says, we put it out there. Well, the chiefs slowly picked away and chipped away at the Texans' lead. And they came back and won, 51 to 31, becoming the first NFL team in history to win a playoff game that they were down by 20, and then they won by 20. And you know, they'll be playing today. And I wonder if the Tennessee Titans will experience the Mahomes crunch. See that turnaround? That was his yet. His yet point. That even though they were losing, yet they were together and they can do this thing. Tomorrow, we will be remembering and celebrating Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He's remembered for speaking hope, especially in tough times. In June of 1967, he delivered a sermon entitled, A Knock at Midnight. And he was addressing the prophetic role of the church in grappling with contemporary problems and challenges. And he read the scripture to the congregation. He says, which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say, friend, let me, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has arrived on a journey. I have nothing to set before him. From Luke 11, 5 to 6. He went on to say that those who knock at midnight are really seeking the dawn. Some are, are seeking the dawn of forgiveness. Many are waiting for the church to proclaim God's Son, Jesus Christ, to be the hope of men and women in all the complex personal and social problems. The church must be the trumpet of dawn in every midnight crisis. The church today is challenged to proclaim God's Son, Jesus Christ, to be the hope of men and women in all the complex and social problems. Many will continue to come in quest of answers to life's problems. Many young people who knock on the door are perplexed by the uncertainties of life, confused by daily disappointments, and disillusioned by the ambiguities of history. Some who come have been taken from their schools and careers and cast in the role of soldiers. We must provide for them with the fresh bread of hope and imbue them with the conviction that God has the power to bring good out of evil. Some who come are tortured by nagging guilt, resulting from the wondering in the midnight of ethical relativism and their surrender to the doctrine of self-expression. We must lead them to Christ, who will offer them the fresh bread of forgiveness. Some who knock are tormented by the fear of death as they move toward the evening of life. We must provide with them and for them the bread of faith in immortality, so that they may realize that this entire earthly life is merely a prelude to a great awakening. And finally, he says, there is a deep longing for the bread of love. Everybody wishes to love and to be loved. He who feels that he's not loved feels that he doesn't count. Much has happened in the modern world to make men feel like they don't belong living in a world which has become oppressively impersonable. Many of us have come to feel that we are little more than numbers. Bewildered by this tendency to reduce people to a card and a vast index, people desperately search for the bread of love. He had this knock at midnight to call the church to help people who are perplexed. And I would like to submit to you that the same situation is today. Just like it was in Jeremiah's day, looking at the destruction, struggling with what was going on. 
Just like it was in Martin Luther King Jr.'s day, looking at the situation and saying, God, help us. Today in 2020, God has a plan for us. And in the midst of our anxiety, even in our struggles, even in our pain, even in those tough times, yet God's love is here for you and for me. And he has that bread of life, of forgiveness, of hope and love through his broken body of Jesus Christ. Jesus is available today just like he was back then. That God's love is available right now, right here. Simply opening up our hearts to him and asking him for that love can flood our hearts with that power. So I have a question for you. In the midst of our struggle, in the midst of our tough times, what would you say is your yet? If I were to ask you, like, what is your yet? That in your dark times, in your struggles, in your pain, what's that one thing that keeps you going? That one yet says, you know, I'm going to wake up and go at it again. Jesus can be your yet. If you don't have a yet, God has provided a wonderful yet for you and for me. And not only for us, but for the whole world that the church has an answer to the problems that we face. That Christ came to give us that baptism, that renewal. Not only once, but every single day. That no matter what we deal, life, deal with in life, whether we're a child or we're in the evening of life, that Christ came to give the bread of life, the cereal of life, to help us overcome. You might feel like it's 24 zip and you're just not doing well. It might, we might feel like we have a, a knock at midnight. Jesus is here to help us. And that's the good news, my friend. God's love for you and for me. And also for our world. I pray that whatever we go through, either together or individually, or those who come to our church and are going through tough times, may we always remember that yet, my friends, yet God's love is faithful every single day. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that in the midst of our despair, in the midst of our dark days, and everyone has them, thank you that you are there. And yet, you love us anyway. Yet, you are faithful. Yet, you bless us. And yet, you have a plan for our lives. Thank you for that love that is overwhelming, that is intoxicating, that is unconditional. That we can't run from it, we can't hide from it. Lord, may we not be consumed by the darkness, but may that light of your love shine in our hearts and our lives. And may we, may we share that with those outside of these walls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, if you'd like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you'd like to be baptized, if you'd like to come and join this church, this is a good church. We promise to help you together as we help each other through some of those dark times, as we point to the Lord, as we encourage one another in the name of Jesus Christ. This is a graceful place, full of love and encouragement. And so we'd love for you to join this church, be baptized, or accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now will you please stand as we sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
This morning as we close, I just want to say, choir, y'all did a wonderful job. It is always such a joy to hear y'all. Ben, Elvis is in the building. <laughs> Very good. And no, Paul, man, you can play the piano, the organ, you can even sing. You're amazing. And um, as we walk out, please continue to pray for the family support services and maybe what we might do in the next couple days to help provide for them under Kevin Deckard's leadership, kind of helping them uh, as they recover from the fire this morning. And my apologies if you're a Tennessee Titan. This was given to me by a, a member who went to Kansas City. He knew that I went to Texas Tech. He knew that I'm a Mahomes fan, so he brought this to me. So I'm not making any predictions today, but, you know, maybe the, we'll see if the Chiefs win. So if you'll please grab a hand with the person next to you. As we walk out, may we remember God's love, that no matter what we face, God's with us. God's compassions never fail, both now and forevermore. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.